Welcome everyone. My name is Jim Fitzgerald and I'm a transportation planner with the DPDA. We know it's been a while since we last met publicly and that's why we're putting together this information back online with these narrated videos. We began this study back in 2019, pre-pandemic. So we want to remind you of the work we did with your help at each of the public meetings we conducted. The meetings presented the overall study approach and how we were developing strategies and recommendations. This information is available in detail on the project website. In this section, I will highlight the information we discussed at three public meetings in 2019. At our first public meeting in June 2019, we, re we reviewed the work undertaken by earlier projects. Many of you had probably participated in previous processes that developed goals, ideas, and strategies reflecting what kind of public transportation you might want to see happen in the South Boston Seaport, as well as identifying a number of problems. Our goal was not to reinvent or redo all of that good work, but to find a way to understand and begin to prioritize elements you said were the most important. So we went through these exercises both individually and then as a group to rank and identify many of the statements that you see here about what may have been the most important goals and challenges related to public transportation. The four sentences on the right of the slide of slide three summarize summarizes the challenges you identified. We grouped what you said into statements that distilled the main sentiments we heard. And I'm going to read them because they're very important. Too many parts of Greater Boston have poor or indirect, too many parts, sorry. <laughs> too many parts of Greater Boston have poor or indirect access to the district. It's hard to get here. Transit services are not prioritized well enough. There's a clear sentiment that transit needs to be more important in the daily life of the South Boston Seaport, and that directly translated into riders who did not feel valued. And transit can feel like second-class service here in the South Boston Seaport. Depending on where you want to go or when you want to get there, transit is simply not available. These sentiments really rose to the top in that first public meeting. When we came back in October 2019, we tried to op operationalize the sentiments that permeated the feedback we heard and turned them into a framework we could use to evaluate individual strategies. The four main categories that we developed are to expand, rely, respect, and equalize. These words very much flow from the sentiments on the last slide. Then our team began to define what each concept means. Let's look at relying as an example. What we mean by rely is for a strategy to be successful, you need to feel that it produces transit that is reliable, predictable option for travel and the seaport. We went further and developed some metrics for what rely means so that we can evaluate individual strategy, strategies against this metric. On the right side of this slide, you can see how we define rely. For example, more reliable transit reduces the number of transfers and has a higher percentage of travel on dedicated facilities or with improved priority. So if you could travel to South Boston Seaport with a one seat ride or a two seat ride versus having to transfer two or three or four times, that is what we mean by making transit more reliable. We also did a very deep dive into regional travel demand, started to present the materials you see at the bottom of the slide about mode share and how people are getting to the South Boston Seaport and how that travel compares to closer interest from the rest of the city of Boston to the seaport. In the October meeting, we presented a detailed series of maps and information showing travel patterns from other parts of the South City of Boston and other parts of the inner core, which includes places like Cambridge, Somerville, Chelsea, and Brookline, as well as the larger regional travel patterns. We evaluated just not how many people are coming from any of those places to different parts of the South Boston Seaport, but how are they getting there today? What we learned is that all things are not equal and there may be higher transit use coming from one neighborhood to the South Boston Seaport than from others. We think this is very much derivative of the kind of service and accessibility that already exists in those places. So we presented a great deal of information about geographic travel patterns. In December, 2019, we returned to discuss how we would develop strategies to address the challenges and how we would evaluate them. We developed dozens of potential transit strategies that would be tested. These strategies came out of previous suggestions as well as past plans, such as you should run better service on these routes, or we should have a direct transit connection that goes here or expand rail service to here. 
At this meeting, we presented a long list of these strategies that sort of defined what they would look like. Then we developed an evaluation method methodology to test each of these strategies using the metrics, metrics we listed on slide four. In the lower right corner of this slide, the evaluating methodology is applied to expand with its definition. Expand, access to the region's people and places is maximized. Depending on the connectivity that was provided by any individual service or recommendation, the strategy scored a number of points. Our team went through this process on every single project. In the later presentation, we will walk you through some further examples of how that process happened and what the resulting scores are for each strategy. Section three, which is the next section, presents ongoing and recently completed efforts in the South Boston Seaport. 